Okay, so I realised that I haven't uploaded a video in a long time now. Um, so long in fact, I got a message off my mother to make sure um, that I'm not dead. So I felt I should just clarify this by first saying that I'm not dead and then secondly doing some sort of video. Um, for thematic setting, I'm sitting in front of the Canadian flag and the Puerto Rican flag, as uh, my two roommates are Canadian and Puerto Rican. Um, I do have an EU flag in the post. Uh, I decided to order one because... Um, well, the only people who own an English flag... Well, I don't want to be the sort of person who owns an English flag. Uh, so I thought I would choose the identity that I'm proud of for as brief a period of time as I am allowed to... Uh, as, as I am actually a part of that group. So, EU flag in the way. In the post. Uh, what I want to talk about today is just the difference between English grammar and Chinese grammar. Um, and just kind of mumble about that. So, first thing I want to do is talk about like why it is that... The grammar structure in Chinese, like, necessarily makes Chinese an easier language to learn than, say, uh, French or Italian. Um, and this kind of ties into a difference, which is basically that, as I mentioned before, tenses don't really exist in Chinese. Um, so if I was to say, like, um, yesterday I drank coffee, I'd be like, uh, cafe. Like, I, yesterday, to drink coffee. Whereas in, in English, it's like, I, yesterday I drank coffee. Today, like now, I am drinking coffee. In the future, I will drink coffee. Um, whereas in Chinese, always stays the same. It's always, or like, I drink coffee. The only thing that changes there um, is you just put a word in for the time. You'd be like, yesterday, I drink coffee. Today, I drink coffee. Tomorrow, I drink coffee. Um... Now, I drink coffee. So that's kind of how the, the Chinese works there. Basically, there's no way of conjugating the verb. Um, also, the other thing to note there is that also stays true... Um, the other thing to note there is that, like, the reason that is, is because... So in English, you can just put some more letters on a thing. So if I'm like, okay, um, run, like, the past tense of that is ran. You can, like, change the letters around. Basically, because the characters in Chinese are like characters, you can't really like add another stroke to sim to like signify it being in the past tense. Well, I suppose you could, but that's that's not how the language works. Um, so this is interesting because basically it leads to um, all Chinese verbs are in this like weird nebulous place where all verbs are infinitive. So an infinitive verb is like to drink coffee, um, or just a uh, to drink. There's the infin infinitive there. Um, in French, all verbs are, when when a verb is infinitive, it's it with er at the end. So uh, I can't think of any examples. It's a long time since I've French. So basically, every time you say a sentence in Chinese, you're always saying like I to drink coffee. I yesterday to drink coffee is like I drank coffee yesterday. So that's kind of the weird like tense difference that that has a difference there. Um, so that's like one way in which Chinese is easier. Um, I'm going to now talk about like how it is that Chinese substitutes the lack of tenses with, with other things. So Chinese has a, a particle, like a grammar particle, which is la. Basically looks like that. Um, where it's like, basically, when in English, English is um, filled with staunch categories about tenses, right? So the past imperfect, yesterday I drank coffee, means that like, I am no longer drinking coffee. Like, drank is... Pa like, I was means that I'm not doing it anymore. Whereas, like, yesterday I ran. I mean, you could still be running today, right? But yesterday I was running means you've since stopped. Um, and, like, French again has this more, right? It has, like, a past historical tense for things that happened a long time ago, but um, were historical. Uh, I don't really know how this works. Phoebe Gittens once offhand mentioned this to me when we were chatting about French. Um, but, yeah, like... The way in which Chinese is different is the thing that Chinese has that English doesn't is, is la, um, which is used to denote change. Uh, also other things, but change is the more interesting one. Um, so, like, for example, if it is raining and it wasn't raining before, you'd be like, oh, it's hot, but it wasn't hot before. You'd be like, tian si zhe le, which is like, the weather is now hot. Or like, the weather previously was not hot and has since became hot. Um, or, for example, like, if, you know, you've just, like, if, if you tell me something and I didn't know that thing was true before, I'd be like, oh, wujadala, which is like, well, previously I didn't know, but now I know. Uh, wujadala, warming baila, like, oh, previously I didn't understand, but now I understand. 
Um, which is just like a, it's like a cool interest uh, thing in the language. And there's more of this focus on change. And the other example of where this comes up is the, um, like the suffix tilai, which literally means like to get up or like to awake. So if I want to be like, um, to be like, so, so to say that I'm getting up from bed, I like, as in I'm waking up, I use chilai. Uh, but also you use it for like other verbs that convey a meaning. So jan is to stand. Um, but if you want to say like, I am like standing up, you say wo jan si lai, which is kind of like the similar, the most, the closest English, right? So it's like wo jan si lai, kind of indicating that a movement, pretty, you are not standing, now you're going to standing. Um, other examples of where this comes in, it comes in a lot, but the other examples that make well is like, um, she made me laugh would be ta rang wo xiao si lai, which is basically like previously I was not laughing, but kind of it's describing the action of a thing not happening to going to a level of happening. Um, similar to la, because so la, la, denotes a, la denotes a change in state. So wo zhi dao la is like previously I did not know, now I know. Whereas wo xiao ti lai is like, I mean, maybe I was before, but like the amount of laughing I've been doing has been increasing. Like it is like standing up or um, like if you're putting together all of, or like my favorite example of this is like the, the, well, the, the, the my favorite example of this is xiang, which is like to, to, rem or can mean to like, to want to, has a lot of definitions. Like, so it's to want, to remember, um, to miss, etc. But to say like, like to say something is like coming to your mind, you would say, well, uh, what's xiang ti lai? Um, which is like previous, which is basically like, like it's coming up, like it's waking up in my head. Like it's it's getting there, but it, it's not quite there. Or to say that like, you know when you, you know when someone says a place name and you're like, oh, I know where that is. Oh, that's, um, uh, and you can't remember where that is. You'd say, uh, wo, wo xiang butzi lai da. Which is basically like, it's not getting up. Like I can feel it getting up, but it's not waking up. It's not moving. Um. So yeah, basically that's me kind of mumbling about what I think the, the coolest difference in um, grammar is between English and Chinese, or at least, yeah, the coolest, and I'd say the most prominent, is the difference between, like, the tra the tenses in English, um, and also this, like, movement. It's the things denoting a change of state, which exists in Chinese, which kind of exists in English, uh, but, but in a different way. So, there's me mumbling about grammar.